Hello everybody, welcome back to some more Kerbal Space Program and welcome back to another aircraft tutorial. Uh, in the first of these tutorials that I did we looked at the stability of aircraft and towards the end of it we looked at craft that could uh, fly straight and level and stable without stability assist on. Uh, and we also looked at a pretty rough and ready method for making an aircraft that could do that. Today we're taking a bit more of an in-depth look at that, uh, also looking at some not quite so rough and ready methods for setting up your aircraft. Uh, it's worth pointing out that you can get this kind of flight with any basically stable aircraft in KSP. Uh, you can use trim, which is basically just holding down the Alt key and tapping the directional controls until you get the result you want. Uh, no, today we're looking at uh, is the design of the aircraft inherently capable of uh, performing that kind of flight without any further assistance? Generally speaking, it's not a terrible idea to uh, make sure your craft can do this, if at all possible. Uh, for example, if you're flying along with Stability Assist on, and Stability Assist is struggling to keep the nose up, then if you try to pitch up, you're not going to have much luck. It's not going to be able to do that very quickly. So it's not purely an academic exercise, or just for the look of the thing. Also, uh, to keep this as open and accessible as is possible, we'll sort of be discussing general concepts and then uh, doing things sort of by eye and by trial and error. We won't be involving any definite calculations or any mods. Uh, so with, uh, with that in mind, let's get started. Okay, so just to do a bit of a recap, in that first tutorial we talked about uh, getting an aircraft that's basically stable, which means the, uh, the centre of lift, the aerodynamic centre I should say, is behind the centre of mass. That means uh, the aircraft will stay the right way round, the tail will stay at the back end, the nose will stay at the front. Um, then we talked about doing, uh, as I said, a pretty rough and ready method for getting an aircraft that's stable in straight and level flight without stability assist on. And uh, that involves basically taking this wing surface and just giving it a little bit of a pitch up. And then aligning the center of lift with the center of mass. If we were to pitch it back down again, we can see the aerodynamic center is still behind the center of mass but the center of lift is now straight on, slap bang on the center of mass there. Just fiddle about with it a bit. There we go, that's looking good. Um, now, there are some slight problems with uh, doing it like this. Uh, as I said, it's a very rough and ready method. It's not perfect. Uh, well, let's go take a look. So as we take off, the nose readily pitches up as we lift off from the runway. That's kind of what we wanted it to do. Um, but you'll notice on the nav ball that the nose is ever so slightly above the prograde vector, which is kind of a problem. And as you're flying this, you can see that it, uh, it pitches up a little bit more readily than it pitches down. As it gets into this oscillation of um, pitching up a bit too much, losing, uh, losing a lot of speed, then its nose pitches downward as it gains speed, but it's got too much, so the nose pitches up again. Rinse and repeat. Now, this is an oscillation that happens to real-life aircraft, but uh, obviously they're designed to minimise it and uh, also control systems help. But here it's very exaggerated and you can tell just by flying it that it's, it's a bit too pitchy-uppy. Do stop me if the jargon gets too much, won't you? So as I said, a rough and ready method. It's good for getting everything vaguely in the right place, but it's not perfect. It, uh, it definitely needs some fine-tuning. So let's take a look at the wings. Now the wings on this aircraft I have angled up slightly so that it is producing uh, positive lift as the aircraft is flying straight and level. Obviously you can alter this uh, this angle of attack. I've, uh, I've done it by one minor notch on the rotation here, just holding down shift and rotating it like that. So that's equivalent to five degrees. Um, getting rid of that. Um, now obviously the higher the angle of attack the more drag the wings will create but also the more lift and the uh, the lower the speed at which you will be able to fly straight and level and any faster than that the wings will produce uh, a lot more lift, your nose will uh, nose will pitch up and you'll start to climb. So uh, you can uh, you can adjust the angle of attack on the wings to, uh, to alter the speed at which your aircraft uh, can actually fly straight and level. Um, but we're not looking at that at the moment. The problem we're having is that uh, there's a definite pitching up moment on our aircraft. When we did this using the uh, the uh, center of lift and the center of mass indicators, the center of lift indicator on KSP is a little bit of a weird one. It's sort of a mixture of center of lift and aerodynamic center as well. And um, as I said, something is causing the nose to pitch up more than we want. So these being the only things that produce lift in a straight and level flight, that means these must be a bit further forward than the uh, the center of mass, which we can actually see here, because that's going to be roughly 
the centre of the wing is going to be roughly the centre of lift. So I'm just going to try moving them back a bit. And I'm going to have a play about with that, and I will see you again in a second. OK, so that's much better. We're still getting a little bit of the oscillations, and that's not helped by the fact that this is a very light craft with some very large wings, so that's going to just exaggerate that a little bit. Um, but generally, yeah, moving the wings a bit further back seems to have solved the majority of the problems we were having. The, the nose certainly isn't pitching up as readily as it was. Um, so I suppose that's the first thing to note. Uh, if the nose is pitching up more readily than it should, then the, the centre of lift is too far forward, you need to move the wings back a little bit. If the nose is pitching uh, down a little bit, then obviously the centre of lift is a little bit behind the centre of mass, you need to move the wings a bit forward a little bit. Uh, also worth noting, angle of attack. Uh, the, uh, the shallower the angle of attack, the faster the aircraft will have to travel before it reaches that equilibrium point uh, where it's flying straight and level. Any faster than that, obviously, it will start to climb. Any slower than that, it will start to descend. And obviously, the greater the angle of attack, the, uh, the slower that speed will be. Um, but uh, what happens if moving the wings about isn't really an option? So this is my A10 Warthog, which I made for a video a little while ago, where I uh, went and shot the hell out of everything that moved and quite a lot of the things that didn't. Um, it's available up on my Steam Workshop page, by the way. This is a slightly more updated version than the one uh, I actually showed in the video. Um, but with this, I had a, a bit of a problem when it came to balancing, because I wanted this to fly, uh, be able to fly straight and level without stability assist on. But um, yeah, positioning the wings is a little bit more tricky on this one. Now, if your craft does have a tendency to pitch up a bit too much, or pitch down a bit too much, then positioning the wings is probably the best way to uh, correct that. It, uh, it affects the fewest other variables and doesn't overcomplicate the issue. But uh, with this A10, my primary concern was to get it to look like the real-life A10. So the, uh, the positioning of the wings wasn't really something I could change too much. Uh, let's go take a closer look at this. So we're back in the space plane hangar with my A10. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that the uh, the angle of attack on the wings is much shallower. That's because I wanted that uh, that equilibrium speed, that straight and level speed, to be much faster for this craft. I was trying to get it so that the uh, so that with a full loadout of weaponry, the straight and level speed for this craft roughly matched the real life A10's uh, cruising speed. But anyway, as I said. Realism was my primary concern for the placing of these wings here, and if you look at the centre of mass here, you can see that the centre of lift that these wings are going to produce is going to be behind that. That's going to produce uh, a force that's trying to lift the tail up and hence point the nose down, and we kind of want to counter that somehow. So uh, we need something that's going to kind of push the tail down and push the nose back up. So what I've done is, if I remove the tail plane, is I've just put a slight downward angle on the tailplane there, and that is going to, as I said, push the tail down, push the nose back up, counter that force that the those wings being behind the centre of mass is going to produce. Um, now, this is something that is done on real-life aircraft not very often. Obviously, you want to avoid it if you possibly can, but it's certainly not unheard of. Um, obviously, if for some reason I had these wings that I couldn't move, which were in front of the centre of mass, obviously that would produce a force uh, lifting the nose up, pushing the tail down. So obviously I could angle this up to produce a force that counteracts that. I mentioned earlier this does introduce some other variables into the mix. Obviously now you have a down force on this tail plane. That's going to mean there's a extra force pushing down on the aircraft, meaning that to balance that you're going to need to uh, travel faster, produce more lift, maybe angle the wings up. It's, it was very much a trial and error job with this, but I'm quite pleased with the results in the end. So there's a couple more things to consider uh, when you're designing your aircraft and you're trying to get it stable. Obviously, uh, the positioning of anything that's going to cause drag, particularly the wings. If your wings are very high, that's going to create a drag force which is above the centre of mass. It's going to try and uh, pull the nose up. Conversely, if your wings are low, that's going to do the opposite. Uh, the other thing is thrust. Now, these engines are very much above the centre of mass, um, which had I just made them as normal engines would mean that there was extra force uh, above the centre of uh, centre of gravity in this direction would have pushed the nose uh, pushed the nose down. I've taken a leaf out of the real life A10s book here, though. I've um, 
I've angled these jet exhausts upward so the thrust is, it's got a slight down component to it and it passes straight through, or near enough straight through the actual centre of mass of the aircraft. Uh, but once again, this does, uh, this does produce extra downward force which you then need to compensate for. As I said, this was, this was a lot of trial and error, but we got there in the end. One more thing before I go, if you are going to fly a craft without stability assist that's set up like this, then obviously if you, uh, if you do uh, bank the wings, then the aircraft is going to start to turn. But much like real life aircraft, now all of the wings lift isn't going up, some of it is going sideways, uh, trying to avoid getting too heavily into the maths of it here. Um, but this means that the aircraft's nose is going to drop and you are going to start to descend, so you might want to uh, up the throttle a little bit or put on a little bit of upwards trim. It's up to you, really. But uh, that will be all for today. I do hope you've enjoyed it. I do hope you found it useful. If you have, uh, please let me know in the comments. Please consider liking, subscribing, maybe even following me on Twitter. The link will be in the description. I'll, I'll see what I can do about throwing together another tutorial in the near future. But uh, until then, thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.